Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lakshmi and welcome to the 50th episode of Yashoda Hospital's online session Know Your Doctor episode. To celebrate this milestone, we have with us Dr. Vishnu Reddy, Chief of Medical Services from Yashoda Hospital's Somaji Guda. Welcome doctor. So doctor, can you tell us more about yourself and brief us about your journey in this medical field? Uh, thank you very much uh, Lakshmi. So I am Dr. Vishnu Reddy. Uh, I have started the medical journey in 1981 when I uh, joined medical college and then uh, completed my medicine in 88 and then uh, joined my anesthesia course and I did, uh, completed in 1992. I joined uh, Yashoda Hospital Sikindrabad from 2004. So I've been in Yashoda hospitals for more than 18 years. So it's been an amazing journey for me. 30 years plus I've been dealing with patients and you know treating them. So it has been one of the most uh, amazing journeys for me. That's really a wonderful journey sir. So starting your medical journey in 1981, what is that one major change that you have seen as far as medical practice is concerned? This is a very interesting question Lakshmi because uh, I'll tell you how even I realized that uh, the medicine has changed so much in India uh, that you know even a lot of people who are there in this journey have not even realized that you know medicine has changed uh, so much. Uh, very interestingly this uh, I, in 2013, in two, uh, 2013 um, there was a conference in Nigeria uh, wherein uh, we had uh, Yashoda Hospital was participating and then we had two talks. Uh, one talk was being given by Dr. Gokhale and the second talk was by me. And uh, we chose the topic along with my uh, managing director, Dr. G. S. Rao and myself, we were sitting and we were trying to understand what to talk in Nigeria. And then initially we thought in terms of medical tourism, but then we realized that that is not the best talk. Then we looked at okay, why don't we talk on something which is different, of course connected to medicine but not medical topic as such. And then we hit upon the idea of talking on evolution of healthcare in India. And uh, to tell you frankly, that is what has actually opened my eyes, you know. So from 1990, if you really ask me, the things have changed so much. This was primarily because of the entry of private sector into healthcare and where we started bringing in better technology than what it was available. So over a period of time, over the next three decades from 1990 to, 20, to 2020, if you really see the amount of technology that we have brought into the country uh, has revolutionized the way medicine is and now you, you even do not see many doctors going abroad because whatever uh, medical facilities are available abroad. The same medical facilities are available in India. We are doing on the same equipment. The expertise um, undoubtedly is the best in the country. I mean best uh, across the world if you really look at uh, uh, the Indians are the best as far as uh, expertise of uh, uh, skills and expertise is concerned of doctors. But now you see more and more and literally everybody getting treatment done in India and we see a lot of people coming into India for treatment primarily because the quality of care that we give is amazing uh, on par uh, with international standards and more importantly the cost at which we give is literally a fraction of a cost of what is costed in the West. The equipment is the same, the expertise is the same, the outcomes are the same but if you look at the cost that we do, we give at probably 90% or even 95% less cost than what is costed in the uh, Western countries. So I think this is how uh, medicine has changed. One of the prime reasons for this again is visionaries uh, who had invested in uh, healthcare sector, uh, especially in private sector like you know our chairman uh, Mr. Ravinder Rao, Dr. G. S. Rao sir, I mean they were, they were right from the beginning always talking from my association with them has been for long and they have always been saying that how can we improve things further, what better technology can we bring in, how can we make the patient's lives much more uh, comfortable, give them state-of-the-art treatment at the same time at a fraction of a cost. So I think uh, the most affordable cost, I think this has been the uh, most important uh, change that happened. Yeah, I think that's rightly said, sir, that technology has changed the way we practice medicine, especially now post-pandemic. So how do you ensure that best quality is delivered to all the patients in this organization? We are always uh, bringing in the latest uh, equipment to, to the hospital. If you really look at the journey of Isha the hospital the last 30 years, we have many, many firsts to our credit. Like we have the first uh, rapid arc which were brought in Southeast Asia and today we have completed more than 25,000 cases on the rapid arc which is the highest number in the world. We have brought in the uh, 
uh, intraoperative MRI with a three Tesla MRI again. I think that is the first in the uh, country and uh, we are the uh, center which is doing the maximum number of these cases. So like that we have many, many firsts like uh, if you go to uh, pulmonology, we have uh, uh, bronchial thermoplasty again which is the first in the country. Then we have uh, intervapor uh, ablation for uh, emphysema, emphysematous chest uh, patients. So even such, such kind of breakthrough and uh, uh, cutting edge technology we are bringing in and uh, these are obviously giving a better quality outcomes to the patients. So apart from technology, technology uh, alone is not sufficient. We need the manpower behind the technology to actually take care of these uh, you know patients and give a good outcome. So in this regard what we normally do is we choose and we, so we get the best uh, consultants possible. We conduct regular CMEs and workshops, uh, we conduct CNEs so that our nurses, our doctors, even our consultants are constantly upgrade, upgrading their knowledge and skills. So this will ultimately you know turn out to be uh, in, uh, in the patient's outcomes will definitely improve with this. The other important thing is services. So uh, most important to give very good uh, service to the patient is uh, I would say two, three points are there. One of them is communication. So how we communicate to the patient right from the time the patient enters the hospital, okay, how, how we receive the patient and how we actually uh, talk to the patient from the front office. So every, every aspect where we touch the patient, we see to it that these staff who are handling these patients are trained properly. You know, communication is the key to a successful outcome because during communication, the patient understands what is being done to him and the patient's relatives and family also will get to know. So communication is something which is very, very focused upon. The other important thing uh, that uh, Yashoda Hospitals has been recognized for and what has been always the focus of the uh, our board of directors, the chairman, the managing director, di director of medical services and all has been service how we need to service our patients. So I think this is a service industry. Uh, so uh, the, we have a good amount of manpower who are very well trained and uh, service is the key again, uh, apart from communication, uh, which will see to it that any, every patient and any patient who comes to us, we are able to give a good outcome. The other important thing is we are very focused on how much time this patient spends at diagnostic level or uh, in the um, operation theatres or in the uh, outpatient department. So we have uh, TATs for everything. We have a TAT for the lab wherein we give almost 95% of results are given within one hour. This will help the patients a lot because a lot of patients do visit us from outstation. So I think this way we are trying to give them the best possible service and I think uh, Yashoda has always been recognized for this kind of service. A lot of these international patients with whom I keep interacting, they always tell that these are the best services available. We have never seen any hospital which gives such good services. I think that has been the strength of Yashoda Hospitals and I'm sure we will continue to do that and we will grow much, much further from what we have grown today. Absolutely. I think you've rightly said that about the communication, that communication is the key to successful yes. outcome, be it in our medical field or be it elsewhere, like even in our personal life. So talking about uh, personal life, sir, how does your family react? Otherwise, what is the role of your family um, in your successful journey? Well, uh, Dr. Lakshmi, I mean, without my family support, I mean, there's no way I could have achieved what I have achieved today. I totally dedicated, dedicate whatever I, have, I am today and what I have achieved today to my wife, my better half and my children and including my parents who have always been uh, uh, standing behind me. I know I have put them, put them through a lot of trouble because uh, whatever commitments I give them, I said, okay, fine, we have to go out somewhere. Okay, I'll be there. Uh, I'll be home by six o'clock. But uh, I must have missed out many times going home rather than actually making on time. So I think that has been my track record, uh, unfortunately. But uh, that was the need of the hour and you know the patients, uh, as a doctor, uh, we understand the amount of sacrifices we need to make. And uh, my wife is also a doctor, she is a pathologist, she heads the department in uh, Usmania Medical College. So she understands much but in spite of that, uh, I am sure she was disappointed. I had gave her many reasons to disappoint me by you know not showing up on time or not taking her wherever she has to go. But uh, to tell you frankly, Dr. Lakshmi, I mean without the support of my family, my children, my wife, I think uh, I wouldn't be sitting where I am. Uh, so I am very thankful to all of them. Well, I think that's beautifully said that family support is the most important thing to achieve great success in this medical field. So with both the parents being doctors, how did your children perceive this? I mean, did they wanted to become doctors or something else? 
uh, very very interesting my daughter you know she used to see us uh, study because we were still doing a post graduation probably my wife is still uh, studying and i was also had a lot of these books which i was referring to and we used to carry such thick books and you know she looked she had one glance at us and she she just said i am not going to study so hard i am definitely not going to do medicine so she was very very clear right from day one that she didn't want to do medicine so and um, we never ever pushed any any of our children so i have a daughter who's elder so she did her iit and then Uh, she finished her ms phd from yale and now she is working in atlanta she is quite happy doing whatever she is and but my son again he was uh, very focused and he said i want to do medicine i mean lot of my friends actually dissuaded him saying that you know medicine is so tough why do you want to do medicine why can't you do some other field you know you will be more happy but uh, he was very focused and we didn't want to dissuade as i said neither of us my wife and me we never ever influenced our children to do this or that we said okay you want to do this please understand it's hard work all the way whether you do medicine you do engineering you do law you do any field doesn't matter for every field if you have to be successful a lot of hard work goes so you have to work very hard that's interesting to know about your family sir so tell us about one most important thing what you enjoy being in this profession uh, the most important thing about this profession is the satisfaction it gives you when you treat a sick patient when a patient comes to you in distress when the family or the patient is in distress they come to us and they, you know they come with full hope so the smile when these patients go home ultimately after getting the treatment done is what gives us the satisfaction and the immense pleasure uh, in for being in this profession so i think that is the biggest takeaway yes the sacrifices are immense the amount of uh, hard work we do so many sleepless nights we have there are days when i have not gone back home for a few days because i had to be with the patient who was very very sick so this was the routine in fact my wife even said then why don't you take a room and stay in the hospital and we will come and see you so things were so bad at a point of time but then i always used to see look at the patient and once the patient becomes all right i used to uh derive immense pleasure out of that but then when these patients become all right and go home and the smile they give us and the thanks they tell us i think that is very very satisfying i think i couldn't agree more that satisfaction is the most important thing no matter what profession you choose so doctor how do you balance your work life i mean what are the other little things you enjoy doing the most apart from work Uh, the most important uh, and the most satisfying time is when i spend time with the family i go uh, on an outing with them and i visit my children uh, or when they come to india so i'd like to spend as much time as possible with them apart from that of course i enjoy reading books so i have a good collection of books so whenever i get time uh, i do uh, read up catch up on reading and uh, listening to some music so i think uh, these are the hobbies that i have and then really enjoy doing these things So that's really nice to know that you're an ardent reader as well. So being in the hospital administration with decades of rich experience, what was the most challenging situation you faced and if so, how did you tackle it? Uh Dr. Lakshmi, the most uh, you know challenging situation was the last 2 years of the pandemic. I think this was a totally unexpected, unprepared. Nobody in the world was prepared for a pandemic like of this sort. We only read in history about the Spanish flu and all, but uh, I mean, uh, I wouldn't. I I don't know whether to say we are fortunate or unfortunate. But you know, we are a hundred years later. We have gone through the similar pandemic, and this has really, uh, really tested each and every one of us. Uh, to tell you frankly when uh, the pandemic struck and you know everything was almost coming to a grinding halt we all of us knew that you know hospitals will be the forefront in, in this war uh, on the pandemic and our directors and everybody were uh, totally focused on trying to see how best we can deliver patient care and my job during those times was to counsel the doctors counsel the nurses because every day i used to get so many to my come to my office or whenever i go on rounds they used to come to me and said what if i get sick what if i carry this uh, this virus to the family back home what what will happen to them what will happen to me to tell you very frankly lakshmi even i was in the same situation because even i didn't know what would happen and even i was afraid that you know i would carry this virus home but again as i said the kind of support i got from my family my wife my children my parents but this obviously this fear that i had i had to overcome this fear i had to fight it of course with the support and help of my family but i could not show this to my staff and i had to assure them and take tell them that yes we are there we are also standing by the side of you let me tell you this was the most challenging time not for me but for the whole world if you really see 
uh, everybody was afraid of a nuclear war and a nuclear bomb that could you know end the world but i think nuclear uh, war is nothing in comparison to what we happened because this small virus could actually shut the whole world down during the first and the second wave of covid i should thank the entire staff and especially the management the board of directors the chairman the md the the all the directors involved because they were coming every day literally to the hospital and trying to help us out also and giving us also confidence that yes you please people you you, you work we were in the forefront and i should uh, here uh, acknowledge and uh, let the people know that you know yashoda hospitals has been in the forefront of treating covid patients more we had the largest ecmo unit running and we did many uh, airlifts from across the country and then uh, we have done a lot of lung transplants also i think this is these are the kind of challenges that we faced and i am proud to say that um, with the uh, able uh, team that we have uh, at our disposal the consultants the nurses the technicians everybody including the administrative staff i think this could be possible and uh, i am extremely proud of this uh, for this achievement uh, on behalf of the entire uh, management i want to thank everybody who have supported us during this pandemic i think i totally agree with you sir that this pandemic was the most challenging situation that anybody in this world would have faced because ironically you were sitting on the opposite side of the table and counseling the healthcare staff and the frontline the doctors but not the patients so thank you doctor it was wonderful talking to you Thank you so much Lakshmi. Thank you doctor. So this brings us to the end of this episode. A big thank you for all your encouragement and support all this long. Do join us for the next week as well. Thank you and stay safe.